I'm a web developer, but I'm also a weeb. I've been trying to teach myself Japanese to prepare for a trip to Japan that I'm taking next spring. For the uninitiated, there isn't as much of a focus there on learning English as you find in other countries, so I figured that learning the language would be the best way to communicate with people and make the most of my trip. It'll also let me watch One Piece episodes without subtitles, which would be bliss. I've been learning how to speak Japanese with an audiobook, which has been fantastic by the way, link in the description, but I want more, and I keep getting these ads for language learning AI apps on Instagram. After a bit of digging, they seem to be mostly chat-based interfaces. Hmm. It turns out ChatGPT can speak other languages, so I spent hours making a language learning AI chat app to save like five bucks. Here's how it went. For my framework, I went with SvelteKit. Not only do I absolutely love it, but I wanted to keep this project short, and SvelteKit is what I use at work, so it's what I'm most familiar with. I also decided to use the skeleton component library for a few reasons. It's pretty easy to use, easy to adjust styles later on, and importantly, includes a Svelte store that integrates directly with the browser's local storage. That was pretty useful as I wanted this app to run 100% in the client, avoiding the mess of data storage and authentication and all that jazz. And that's basically it. I started by scaffolding out the basic structure of the app. Essentially, it's a chat interface where users can chat with different avatars, each with their own distinct personality and speaking level. Each language will have a beginner, intermediate and advanced avatar. And I found this amazing free API for generating avatar images called DiceBear. I love the style. It's a bit reminiscent of Duolingo, so it'll be familiar to people, which is a bonus. Each avatar has a description, a name, an image, and a difficulty level, which folks will be able to switch between as they improve. Importantly, the GPT token and all avatar conversations are stored in local storage, so it's not going to cost me anything in infrastructure, and chats will still be persisted between sessions. So this is roughly what we've got so far. It's very much unstyled at the moment. I'm pretty much just using the default skeleton bits and bobs and some avatars uh, that I found on Avatar. Thank you very much, GitHub Copilot, for that one um but effectively we've got some different chats they don't really do anything at the moment and a place to enter chat gpt api token so i can enter that there and if i save it it actually will be saved in the local storage and the other thing that will be saved in the local storage is all of your conversations so if i just send a message in here, you can see that we start getting messages populated in the local storage and what's really nice about this is it means that if i reload the page the messages stay, the token stays, and even if I sort of open a new tab, the messages will be there and everything will be saved across sessions so you can come back to it later and everything is stored locally on your machine. The next step now is to add some language selection, hook it up to ChatGPT and get these conversations flowing. The next step was to add language selection and some more avatars. This was done using a simple dropdown and I actually used ChatGPT to generate the avatars for all the different languages for me. It did a pretty good job and I'm happy with how it all turned out. DiceBear generates the avatar images randomly based on a seed, so there's absolutely no correlation between the avatar and their image. I used the name for the seed, but honestly, this is plenty good enough for a V1. And if there's anyone out there who wants to put together some decent avatar images for the project, I definitely wouldn't turn you away. Once I'd added a bit of styling to the actual chat messages, it was time to move on to the interesting bit of this project, the AI. I'm pretty familiar with the OpenAI API, so the app's internal conversation representation already exactly matched OpenAI's. I used the GPT tokenizer library to dynamically trim the conversation conversation history to keep it to a maximum of 7,000 tokens. This should prevent the API from responding with extremely short messages when the limit is reached or from breaking completely. The next step was to write the system prompt. For those who aren't familiar, ChatGPT uses system prompts to determine how it will respond to user input. In this case, I provide the AI with some instructions and some details about the avatar. I also thought it would be fun to slightly change the functionality based on the avatar's difficulty level. For example, in advanced mode, the AI won't provide pronunciation for Japanese hiragana, katakana, or kanji glyphs. And do you know what else would be totally advanced? You, hitting the like and subscribe buttons. All that was left to do at this stage was to actually send this to OpenAI and display the response to the user. This was pretty straightforward to do with a fetch call and everything worked brilliantly first time, I wish. It was pretty close though, and a little bit of bug fixing later and I was happy with the final outcome. So here's what we have now and I'm pretty happy with this. So I've deployed it to production using Vercel. Since you last saw it, I've made all the changes I mentioned and I've also made it completely mobile friendly. So essentially, all we have to do to use it is first pick a language. I'm going to leave it on Japanese. And then we can use this selection on the left to pick our avatar. I'm going to go with Haruta, the beginner Japanese avatar. And let's just ask him to teach me Japanese. Unfortunately, the OpenAI API is a little slow because ChatGPT is a little slow. But once it comes back, you can see he's answered using Japanese characters as well as given me the pronunciation, which is really good because I'm trying to learn hiragana and katakana at the moment. And I can use this pronunciation and match it up with the characters to try 
try and learn it a little bit better. This can keep going and you can chat with the avatar for as long as you want. And everything is still saved nicely in the local storage here. And you can see my chat with Haruto is all visible here. If you think this is cool and want to give it a go, you'll find the site at langchat.ihh.dev. The code is also available on GitHub and I'm totally open to contributions. You'll find the link to both things down in the description. New languages would be appreciated or if you want to provide a custom theme for Skeleton, that would also be epic. If you're not a software engineer yet, but you want to be able to create stuff like this yourself, why not check out this video on my favorite websites for learning how to code.